So this is the latest addition to my homemade tackle arsenal and it's a buzz bait which is really a top water bait uh, for summer and I'm making it in the middle of winter but there we go. Hopefully with a bit of luck in late spring and summer uh, when the water warms up and there's a bit of wildlife around the top of the water I should be able to use this to lure a couple of pike out from the reeds. Despite looking quite complex it's a pretty straightforward lure um, I'll start at this end and we've got a part of a pop rivet here, a, a blade, this is made from aluminium, bead, the wire itself I've used here 250mm uh, 10 inch long piece of 1.25mm or 50 thousandths of an inch stainless steel wire. I've got a weight here which is drilled, I have attached some eyes to, a rubber skirt and a hook, and the hook is a, an O'Shaughnessy 5 slash zero C hook quite of a big thing but hopefully it'll be big enough to grab a pike. To attach my wire to the hook I'm gonna I'm gonna take it through the eye about 30 mil inch and a quarter and then just grab it with a pair of pliers tight as I can. Then I'm gonna kind of twist it up and make just one first loop If you're having difficulty with this with your fingers, an easy way might be with the vise. So once I've got one loop on it, I can use the pliers to do the heavy work. And I'm just going to grip it there, the wire, and twist the hook. Again, this won't work with all the hooks because the wire is quite heavy. So you might have to do this in the vise. There we go. Just need to bend that up. So that's secure, but there is still some movement there. Um, and I'm going to take that movement out by powder coating the whole joint there. The movement comes because the wire is basically a lot smaller than the hole it's passing through. And also, it's very difficult to tightly wind the wire around the hook shaft. So this is standard yellow powder coat. Obviously I can't get my hook in there on the wire, so what I'm going to do is tip some out onto this paper that I've put a crease in. I don't need a huge amount. Let's give it a flip around. Let's see there, there's a bit that's stuck together. So I'm going to heat it and dip it into that there. The powder coat's had a bit of a chance now to cool down and you can see there that it's completely blocked up the eye and overcoated the coils of wire. There's now no movement at all between that hook and the wire. An alternative to this is probably a couple of coats of 5 minute epoxy and that will do the same job. It doesn't look particularly pretty but it's going to be covered by the skirt anyway. Once the joint between the hook and the wire has been either powder coated or coated with epoxy uh, it's really time to pick out a weight. These are all weights I've used previously. You can see here these are brass Carolina rig weights and what all the weights have in common is they've all got a hole drilled through. You're going to need that to slide that over the wire. I've got drilled bullets here. I've powder coated some, painted some. Um, I'm going to do something different. I'm going to use one of these barrel weights just to hold my weight in place. I'm going to put it on a bit of plasticine there just to stop it rolling around. Uh, what I want to do is add some eyes to the head. Um, and these are self adhesive 3D eyes that I'm using. I'm just going to stick one on one side and then just position the other opposite. Oop. I'm 
Now the problem with this adhesive on these is, is it's not very good. So I've got a bit of super glue and I'm just going to use this as a kind of temporary measure. Um, and rather than just pour it on, I'm going to use a tiny bit with a pin and just kind of just get a drop there down behind the eye. On the other side the same. So once the super glue's had time to dry, I can put the real cover and protection on, which is this uh, heat shrink tubing. And this is just slightly bigger than the barrel weight. So I'm going to slide it over, leave a bit just at the front, um, and then I'm going to get the heat gun. Just to avoid heat up my fingers, I'm just going to put it on a bit of wire. And then give it a blast. Then it's just a case of taking your head, sliding it down. So this drawing will be available as a PDF, it should be on my blog and there'll be a link below the video. Uh, this is a design I've been working to and testing. So I'm going to shape this to that design. What I'm basically going to do is lay it over the drawing. I've got a pair of pliers there, I'm just going to make this first bend. And the second bend. And it's, it's kind of important to keep everything in the same uh, plane. I need a bit more there. Yeah. And then I'm going to go to this loop here. So just changing the camera angle there might make it a bit easy to see. I'm going to bend this down here, this wire. Form in that loop. And then wrap it up around. again with the drawing I can just make that mark and make that final 90 degree bend there. So it's really then just a case of blade and skirt. So to create the blade, I'm forming it from this, which is aluminium sheet, and it's half a millimetre thick, or 20 thousandths of an inch. Um, the first thing I need to do is cut out one of the templates, and the templates are made in double. I'll show you why that is. So this is one I've cut out. I'll just get rid of this sheet. So I'm going to take out my double blade template and uh, put a bit of uh, child's stick adhesive on the back. And then I'm going to, using this dividing line, fold it over so it's on both sides. And you can check that it's lined up by looking at the, the line. Using a pair of kitchen scissors I've just roughly uh, cut out a small section of plate. 
just because it's easy to work with when I come in close to the template. Just before I begin cutting close to the lines I'm gonna to have to punch out the two holes here and I'm going to do that with a piece of hardwood um, and I've got a panel pin here this is two millimeter and I've just basically cut the end off and flattened it on a diamond stone or a, or a bench stone and that's going to be my punch so I'm going to put it on the two holes position of the two holes see the first one That's punched clean through. Then the second one, same. So I've got my two holes. Now I can start cutting to the lines. And then taking my scissors, I'm just going to cut as neatly as I can uh, to the line. because I've got the picture on both sides I can turn it over instead of trying to cut the other way Just see if I can trim a bit excess off there first Tease that out. To shape the blade into a propeller, um, I'm going to take a pencil and just um, using that line there as a mark, I'm just going to round the blade around there so it's 90 degrees, and then I'm going to go around to the other way. Do exactly the same, but in the opposite direction. I'm just going to snip off that sharp point there, and then I'm going to bend these tabs over to form a little bearing. One this end, and then this one here. And then just kind of delicately check the edges to see if there's anything particularly sharp. There doesn't feel to be on there, to be honest, that feels okay. So I can start peeling off the, the tape uh, on this protective film that it was supplied with. And also I'm just going to snip off that point at the other end. There we go. So once you've completed your blade you can assemble it. What I'm going to do is slide up here first uh, a little bead, 8mm bead, then my blade. Should sit on there. And then you're going to need one of these, which is a, a rivet head. I'll show you how to get that. So to make a rivet head bearing what you need is a pop rivet um, and all I'm going to do is just take out the centre and there, there's your bearing. So once you've got your rivet head 
it's again just take a pair of pliers and bend this section down what that's going to do is stop your stop your blade coming off and then with a decent pair of cutters you can just cut this tag here if you want to you can crush your rivet on some people say, oh, I got crushed it on a bit too well there. Some people say that it, it makes a bit of a better squeak if the rivet's fixed. To create the skirt for the layer, I'm using the remains of a mountain bike in a tube. You can see that this one has been repaired previously. Uh, so I'm just going to cut off about 150 mil. Mark it there, and then open it up. And it's obviously used this, so it's a bit dirty, a bit of water, scrub it, clean it, whatever. And then by the time I've put this in the lake a couple of times, it'll be bright, spanking black. But width wise, I want about 40 mil or inch and a half, which is. Uh, about the size of these two tram lines here, so I'm just going to trim the width down. Then really it's a case of uh, just taking the scissors, and a sharp pair of scissors is what's needed really here and just shredding it. I'm using these ribs here as a marker. Um, as thin as you can get it I, I find works the best. And it takes me a few minutes just to get into that rhythm of cutting. So I'll do this side and then come back to you. Once one side's completed I can turn around and do the same on the other. But instead of cutting right up to that um, I'm going to cut just short, so about 15 mil, about half an inch short, uh, and that way I'm going to have a little bit in the middle left. There, so about kind of that. So I'll, I'll carry on and do the rest. So when both ends have been cut, I'm going to take some sandpaper and just scrub that centre bit there, and then some rubber solution glue, the repair adhesive for the inner tubes. I'll just rub it on, not all the way across, I want a bit at the back just left. And then I'm going to leave that just a few minutes just to dry. Once that's had a bit of chance to get touch dry I'm just going to add a bit more adhesive and just layer over the top of that. And then I'm going to, I'm going to roll, I'm going to leave a, a bit of a gap, it's not going to be a tight roll. And then I'm going to take a big clip and, and clamp it up. I'm going to leave that to dry. So while that's drying, just for a bit of added uh, security to hold it on, uh, I've got to make just a little elastic band uh, from, from this. I'm just going to cut out a diamond and then just a larger diamond. There we go, and that's going to form a kind of flange. So once you're happy, uh, your glue's virtually dried. Um, it's just a case of popping this elastic band over the skirt there. I'll just kind of put a dull security. Once the skirt's had a bit of time to dry. I'm going to slide the skirt onto the hook. It 
So there you go, off down the riverbank for a test.